didn't get something here. Reich is going to the shotgun. Fourth and five at the 18. There's the snap. He backs up. He looks. He throws. Reed, touchdown! Reed for the touchdown! Unbelievable! The Bills are back in it now, big time! It was unbelievable, incredible. And for the 75,000 plus fans who witnessed it firsthand, it was a game they will never, ever forget. During the next hour, we'll take a look back at that memorable afternoon at Rich Stadium, reliving what was perhaps the greatest game ever played. technology have made it possible for automotive designers to create I feel wonderful I'm beginning to feel like my old self again without chiropractic I probably would have had back surgery by now honestly running or riding my bike with my children I couldn't do that before with chiropractic now I can when I leave his office I'm I'm dancing to my car that is the honest to God's truth. This is not a setup or anything, I swear to you. Dr. Caruso offers personalized chiropractic care. Most insurance plans are accepted, including workman's comp, auto accidents, and Medicare. Bills fans know their team has the right stuff. So does the Buffalo Bills Report, the official publication of the Bills. Marv Levy and Bill Poling appear each month in Bills Report. And you can read about Jan's Smoke Shop and Restaurant on Bloomingdale Road in Akron on the Tonawanda Indian Reservation. Great home cooking at affordable prices. Wait till you taste the soups, the sandwiches, and those homemade pies at Jan's Smoke Shop and Restaurant. You'll eat up Bills Report, too. Just call 6489597. That's 6489597. Bills Report. Once you pick it up, you won't be able to put it down. Break the mall habit. Washington Surplus Tent City, Buffalo's only Army-Navy store, has it all at rock-bottom prices. Shop Washington Surplus for an unbelievable selection of jeans. Check out their large selection of military goods, work clothes, leather jackets by Schott and Reed, name brand athletic footwear and boots, licensed team apparel, with over 25 tents on display. It's Washington Surplus Tent City, 674 Main Street in the Theater District. Welcome back. You know, over 26 years of calling play-by-play -play for the Bills, I've done, well, almost 400 football games, but none, believe me, none, has carried me through the roller coaster of emotions that the 41-38 come from behind win over the Oilers in the wild card game has. And a great deal of doubt going into this game. Let's face it, the Bills in a very big game in Houston the week before had been embarrassed 27-3 with the AFC East title on the line. A chance for home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And come to the rematch once again. They're without their top gun, Jim Kelly. He would miss the game with strained ligaments in his right knee. And for the second straight week, the biscuit, Cornelius Bennett, would be out because of that pulled hamstring. Starting cornerback, Kirby Jackson, would not be able to play against a team that uses four wideouts in the run and shoot. The Bills were a banged up club and there were lots of doubters Many people thought they would never, ever have a chance to go to a third straight AFC championship and to make that trip to Pasadena and Super Bowl 27. The NFL playoffs. Six teams from each conference meet head to head with the survivors meeting in the Super Bowl. The Buffalo Bills knew that path well as the two-time defending AFC champions. But would start this playoff ride as a wild card entrant. Their opponent, the Houston Oilers, were making their sixth consecutive playoff appearance, but had been early exiters on each of those six trips. But as is the case in any playoff game, two teams would wage battle, knowing one would leave the victor and the other would fall. Winning the toss and electing to receive, the Oilers began to march on one of those time-consuming drives, which had so often caused problems for the Bills in the postseason. With Moon hitting on his first four passes, he brought Houston over midfield while controlling the clock. From there, running back Lorenzo White began his assault on the Buffalo defense, powering his way down the field and taking the Oilers inside the Bills' 20-yard line. 
Sanders have had the ball exclusively. Here's Moon to hand off and a run by White at the 20. He's down to the 15 and fighting his way for a first down into about the 12-yard line on the draw play, Lorenzo White. Moon hooked up with Haywood Jeffries on a three-yard scoring strike for the opening score. To the left. Moon waiting for the snap, drops back, looks, fakes once, now starts to run, now throws, touchdown! He got him in the end zone. It is complete to Haywood Jeffries, his third reception, and the Oilers have marched 80 yards, and they have used up all but 551 of this opening quarter in a very, very impressive drive. With fallen leader Jim Kelly relegated to a cheerleader role on the Buffalo sidelines, Bills fans place their hopes on the right arm of Frank Reich. Making his first playoff start, the eight-year backup would need to piece together the kind of drive which his counterpart had just orchestrated. And here we go. Thurman Thomas is the lone setback. And the Bills go to work at the 44, and Thurman runs a trap play and gets out to midfield on a nice quick opener there. Third and five from the Bills' 49. They trail 7-0. Reich waiting for his snap. Still calling out the play over to Metzlars, the tight end on the left. He's now changing he up. over as he changes the play. Back to throw. Here's Reich looking. Throws. He's got the tight end, Metzlars, for a first down to the 40-yard line of the Oilers. Metzlars made the reception in the left flat for 11 yards and a first down. Completing his first two passes, Reich led the Bills inside the Oilers' 20-yard line. The crucial play was a 17-yard toss to wide receiver Andre Reed. Good to Reed at the 30, at the 25, at the 20, and he's down to the 18-yard line. That's the second, third down conversion, 17 yards on that play. A forgotten man down the stretch who had caught just 24 passes over the final nine games of the season Reed was going to shine brightly before the sun went down. An incompletion to James Lofton in the end zone left Buffalo with a stall drive, and the Bills were forced to settle for a 36-yard field goal from Steve Christie. Christie, who, remember, missed a 32-yarder at Houston, will try a 36-yarder off the left hash mark, trying to get the Bills on the board. Here's the kick. It's on the way, long enough, and it is good. So the Bills have scored, and now trail 7-3. That would change quickly as Moon put together the type of quarter that quarterbacks dream of. Seventy-two, twenty-two yards on the pass, and another Oilers first down. The Bills secondary has been porous through the early portions of this game. And here's a pass coming up. Moon to throw. He fires under the coverage, and it is complete to the 37-yard line to Ernest Givens. And Daryl Talley got over to stop him, well short of a first down. Other three wideouts go to the right. Warren Moon in behind his center. Bruce Matthews. He motions slaughter, drops back the pass, and lets it fly, and it's complete for the first down. And out of And the Bills have been mystified by this short passing game of the Oilers. Here's the pass coming up, looking to the end zone, and it is caught for the touchdown by Webster Slaughter. I believe it was Webster Slaughter for the touchdown. And the Oilers have again driven 80 yards through a porous Bills defense for their second touchdown and lead it 13 to three with the extra point coming up. Here's 
strike the throw out of the shotgun, and BB, and it's in behind him, a badly thrown ball. Takes the snap. Here's a draw play, and Lorenzo dodges by one bill and runs out to a first down at about the 44-yard line. And here is Moon to throw. No pressure on him. He throws a completion to the 35, and tackled at the 33-yard line is Ernest Givens. Clifford Hicks made the tackle on him, and again, no pressure on Moon. 24 yards. It's Duncan. First down for the Oilers. Outside, we'll call it the 26-yard line. Givens goes in motion. He's caught five balls already. Here's Moon to throw. Has time. Throws. And it is caught for the touchdown. What a reception downfield by Curtis Duncan. A tremendous reception down around the goal line between Mark Kelso and Kirk Schultz. 26 yards, and the Oilers have scored again, this time on a drive of 67 yards. Well, you more than me. Moon just laid it up there as Duncan came inside. And again, it's Clifford Hicks, who's not able to even get a hand up. Mark Kelso came over and hit Duncan just as he was receiving the ball. Good job by number 80, Curtis Duncan, to hold on to the ball. 4.09 left in the first half. The Bills are shell-shocked. point is up and it is good by Del Greco and the Oilers have taken a solid grip on this game with a long way to go 21 to 3. throw drifting back throw short he's got Jeffries down to the 29 yard line now they'll take a quick time out here. Waiting for the snap is Moon on third and eight from the 27. Moon to throw. He lofts it down there. Jeffrey's got it. And he goes to the corner flag for the touchdown. That's the second one for Haywood Jeffries. And the Orioles have just decimated the Bills defense. 27 yards, another touchdown. The Oilers now lead 27 to three. Kirk Schultz was the man beaten down at the corner. And Houston has been absolutely perfect. For the half, Moon finished with 19 completions on 22 attempts for 218 yards and all four Oilers touchdowns. His main target was Jeffries, hauling in seven receptions for 91 yards and a pair of scores. Houston went to the locker room, apparently heading to Pittsburgh one week later. Welcome back to the show. And with me now is my broadcast colleague, Greg Brown, the man from Pennsylvania, touchdown brown he had tears streaming down his eyes at halftime i did How but about? i had to wipe yours too what were you thinking you know i can recall talking to the other guys in the booth during halftime and, and almost making plans for the week to come well it'll be interesting without football now what do we do a little bit of vacation time maybe. i looked in the back of the booth and saw your golf clubs i was worried i had them ready but seriously you know here the bills had been beaten 27 to 3 and you said boy they're going to play much better at rich stadium they come out and give up four touchdowns in four possessions, Greg, two 80-yard drives, two 67-yard drives, one drive that consumed 901, another seven minutes plus, and they're down 28 to three at the half. It looked hopeless. Especially, too, because Van Warren Moon was inhuman. Oh. The guy was unbelievable in the first half, over 280 yards of offense for the Oilers, so there was really no sign that anything would change, especially because of the way the Bills played in the first game against Houston. So what, what, what were the Bills doing wrong, do you think? In the well, it was interesting, too, because I know we talked about it during the game. You could see Walt Corey trying to do everything possible defensively. The extra defensive backs, you've already mentioned, of course, the Bills were without Kirby Jackson. But then late in the first half, he goes to the base 3-4 defense and takes his chances. And interestingly enough, that started to work. But Moon was so wired yeah. in that first half. I mean, he played an unbelievable half of football. And they had that momentum going. They had taken the crowd out of the game completely. And I also remember, Van, frankly, the fans booing the team when they left the field. Marv Levy would later say he didn't blame anybody for booing that team. 
Well, 28 to 3 at halftime, but then the great comeback. And we're going to get to that when we come back. The Empire Sports Network is the home of the National Football League's most valuable player. Catch Buffalo Bills running back Thurman Thomas and a special guest from the AFC Champion Bills each week on the Thurman Thomas Show. Come out to Jubilee Foods on South Ogden Street, Buffalo on Wednesday at 7 for the taping of the show. The Thurman Thomas Show airs Thursday nights at 7 on the home of hometown heroes, Empire Sports Network. Medicare is Western New York's most comprehensive sports injury center. Athletic Care specialists use an aggressive approach to rehabilitation so you recover quickly and safely. Athletic Care gets you back in action. In 1590, Galileo hypothesized that all objects fall at the same rate. But then, he never considered the depreciation rate of luxury automobiles. The Lexus LS400 has retained more of its value than any other car in the luxury class. Cash in at Northtown Lexus today. Welcome back to the show. Well, it was 28 to 3 at halftime. Disaster. It got worse. But then it got better, and the Bills eventually made history. With the Bills taking the second half kickoff, Wright came out firing. Looking to run the K-gun in Jim Kelly fashion, Wright completed his first pass of the half to Don Beebe down the left side. Three plays later, Oiler fans began to make reservations for a trip to the Steel City. Right now in the shotgun on third and nine from his 48. Oilers line up in that four-man front. Reich drops back in the pocket, throws, and incomplete, and intercepted and taken away by the Oilers. Down the left sideline goes Bubba McDowell, and McDowell runs into the end zone for the touchdown. The ball went through the hands of the intended receiver, and Bubba McDowell wound up with it in his hands and raced down the sidelines 58 yards for the score. Do you believe it? Well, the Oilers are up and lead 34-3. to Keith McKellar should have caught that pass it was uh it, it was a little out away from his body but he should have been able to bring that back in went right through his hands the tip and then into the arms of Bubba McDowell who returns it for the touchdown and the Oilers are just gushing with points here leading now 35 to 3. A dejected Reich knew that his opportunity may have passed the only question that remained was whether or not he could rescue them the quarterback who led the greatest comeback in collegiate history would now have to do so in perhaps the biggest start of his life. Al Del Greco's kick bounced off the Bills' Mark Maddox at midfield, giving Buffalo excellent field position as it began what would be an incredible and highly improbable comeback. Wright's first pass goes through the hands of linebacker Ernest Robinson for a completion to tight end Pete Metzelars of 24 yards. Following a short pass to Reed, Reich is sacked for a loss of 11 yards, setting up third and 15 at the Oilers' 31-yard line. Dropping off in the secondary. Here's Reich to throw. And he's got the completion to read, and I believe they will give him the first down to the 15-yard line. Yep. And he is shaken up on that play. He took a vicious hit. 
Backup running back Kenneth Davis took over from there. Substituting for an injured Thomas, Davis covers the final 15 yards on four carries, including a crucial five-yard gain on fourth and two inside the 10. Houston seven-yard line. Reich waiting, gives it to Kenneth Davis. He runs for the first down and more and jams it down to about the two-yard line. First and goal. Schiff may give it to Carwell here. No, it's Davis running left, trying to get to the corner flag, and he is in for the touchdown. So the Bills have finally scored. With 8.52 left in the third quarter, they go 50 yards. He beat Al Smith, the middle linebacker, and the Bills have scored and now trail 35-9. Finally, hope was abound at Rich Stadium. The top-ranked offense in the National Football League finally cracked that impenetrable Oilers defense. Now trailing by 25 points, the Bills needed something to keep the momentum on their side. The Bills needed the ball back quick. Utilizing their bag of tricks, place kicker Steve Christie executed an onside kick to perfection recovering the ball himself at their own 48-yard line. Christie ready to run up and kick it off the tee. And he a little onside kick off, and it didn't go far enough. Wait a minute. Yes, it did. Let's see who got the ball. Yes, Bills sir. They might have the ball. You better believe they do. They and guess ball. who does it? Christie. Christie got his own onside kick off out at the 48-yard line. So maybe the Bills can turn it here. Having teamed with Reed to set up the first touchdown, the Bills quarterback found the Reich stuff in third-year speedster Don Beebe, this time finishing the deal with the fleet receiver. And three plays later, Beebe crossed the goal line with a 38-yard touchdown pass to cut the Oilers' advantage in half. Sales it long. assignment indeed he put a move on the corner jerry gray and was wide open down the near sideline and suddenly rich stadium has awakened for now the fat lady remained in the opera house you never know 35 16 with the extra point coming up bills are fired up now they are really fired up. Spurred on by the effort put forth by the Bills' offense, suddenly the Bills' defense became a brick wall. Led by the charges of defensive lineman Jeff Wright and Phil Hansen, the Bills forced the Oilers to punt for the first time in the game. Suddenly, the Houston sideline felt the tide beginning to turn. Wright got rolling again, finding BB down the sideline for 39 yards to set the ball up the one-yard line. Bills fans moaned as a false start penalty nullified the game and brought the ball back to midfield. Undaunted, Wright found his target on his next two passes. A screen to Davis netted 19 yards. Down to the 45, 40, 35, Kenneth Davis, 30, and tumbling down to about the 25 or 6-yard line goes Kenneth Davis. A tremendous play on the little right screen. Jerry Gray flipped him after a 19-yard gain. First down for the Bills. And that's really the first time that screen has worked all day. The Bills have tried it a couple of times, but great anticipation previously by Steve Jackson. This time, Glenn Parker was able to get out there and at least put a little bit of a block on Jackson to hold him up. And Wright cashed in on the next play, finding Andre Reed for a 26-yard scoring strike. 429 left in the third. Here is Wright looking to throw. Rolls out, throws. Down there is uh, Reed at the five in for the touchdown. Andre Reed has scored. And now the Bills are back in this game. Has this 26 game, yards. Has this game swung? Ho, ho, ho. Like a tidal wave here at Rich Stadium. Unbelievable. And the fans know it. The players are all running down to the end zone, yep. high-fiving Andre Reed. And a 
I'll tell you what, the other thing, that screen pass set that up because all of a sudden the de defense of the Houston Oilers has to hold back and it's buying Frank Reich some time. With victory now once again within realistic grasp, the battered Bills defense turned up the intensity. NFL interception leader Henry Jones increased his league-leading total of eight by one with a pick of a moon pass to give the Bills possession of the ball once again. It is pandemonium here at Rich Stadium. The crowd in a frenzy, and the Bills have the ball at the 23, 18-yard return by Henry Jones on the interception. Following a pair of short gains by Davis, Reich rolls out of the pocket and forces an incomplete pass to set up a crucial fourth down play. Takes the snap, drops back, cocks the arm, can't find anybody, rolls out to the right, now throws incomplete. Incomplete. With the ball at the 18, Reich took his team the distance, finding Reed for the score for the second straight possession to bring the Bills to within four points. Reed, touchdown! Reed for the touchdown! Unbelievable! The Bills are back in it now! Big time! What a throw to Andre Reed! He went low about two yards into the end zone and made that reception. It is fandemonium here at Rich Stadium. Oh, yeah! Like never before! Incredible! He beat Steve Jackson in the end zone. Number 83, welcome back! Oh, man! Extra point try coming up. Two minutes left in the third quarter. The Bills have scored 27 points on their way to 28 in this period. <laughs> that touchdown culminated a seven-minute span during which the Bills scored four touchdowns and turned a 32-point deficit into a four-point gap with more than a quarter left to play. Greg, an unbelievable turnaround in that third quarter. The team is down 35-3 to after Bubba McDowell tears it down the field 58 yards to put Houston up. At that point, people started to leave and head for the 219, didn't they? Hey, you know, you mentioned earlier about my golf clubs in the back yeah, of the booth. Right. Well, I had picked them up and had one door out of the booth after I know, Bubba I, ran down. I saw. You had the white hanky on, too. <laughs> well, I think everybody did. Even Marv said it's like winning the lottery to come back. But it started with a touchdown by Kenneth Davis. Then it's 35-10. to 10 and then maybe the biggest play of the game. I think you're right. I think that was really the, the play maybe that turned the tide. At least it got the crowd really into the game. We're talking, of course, about the onside kick that Steve Christie recovered himself. So they go down, they get another score, and now they're down 35-17. And now it's a ball game, and Frank Reich, and what a job he did, Greg. Here's a guy who hadn't started a game all season long. He comes in and does a magnificent job. And could you believe that he could do this in college as well as in the pros. Well, I sure couldn't believe it, <laughs> but his teammates did believe in him, including Gail Gilbert, who at halftime went up to Frank Reich and just reminded him about that great comeback while he was with Maryland. Boy, he won that game and then he came back in this one. And you know, he found the missing part of the puzzle in the passing game. Andre Reed, three touchdown passes in a row. 35-17, Andre puts another one in the end zone and then another one. And now, all of a sudden, it's 35-31, and things are getting really interesting. All of a sudden, it's a ball game. Hey, fasten your seatbelts, because the fourth quarter is coming up. The Oilers are up and lead 34-3. to Sales it long, all along, BB at the 10, at the 5, in for the touchdown! Andre Reed has scored, and now the Bills are back in this game. Looking around, throws, and it's deflected and intercepted by Henry Jones at the 40. The Bills have scored! They have scored to take the lead! The kick is on the way, and it is good! And the Bills have won it! The Bills have won it! The Empire Sports Network is the home of the National Football League's most valuable player. Catch Buffalo Bills running back Thurman Thomas and a special guest from the AFC Champion Bills each week on the Thurman Thomas Show. Come out to Jubilee Foods on South Ogden Street, Buffalo on Wednesday at 7 for the taping of the show. The Thurman Thomas Show airs Thursday nights at 7 on the home of hometown heroes, Empire Sports Network.
1590, Galileo hypothesized that all objects fall at the same rate. But then, he never considered the depreciation rate of luxury automobiles. The Lexus LS400 has retained more of its value than any other car in the luxury class. Cash in at Northtown Lexus today. Some beer companies pour their money into expensive sports events. That can be a trap for you. Other beer companies pour their money into commercials filled with bathing beauties. That can inflate the price. But at Genesee, we pour our money into the purest water and the finest grains. Jenny Light, the light beer that's real beer. G&G Fitness Equipment is locally owned and operated and totally committed to your health fitness. Stop in today and let our thoroughly trained staff show you the proper way to achieve your fitness goals. And do it at your pace, in your home, business, school, or institution, with the best equipment in the business, with full manufacturer warranties and installation available from G&G. Check us out, try us out on your own machine before you buy it. G&G Fitness Equipment, everything you see in health clubs and more. 7660 Transit Road, Williamsville. Peller & Muir, a specialty store for the man or woman who is unwilling to compromise when it comes to the quality and style of their clothing, invites you to save now from 25 to 50 percent on your purchases during our annual winter clearance sale. Peller & Muir, located in the Olympic Towers, 300 Pearl Street, downtown Buffalo, with parking available across from our entrance. Open Monday through Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., Thursday till 8. Peller & Muir invites you to save while you experience the difference. Welcome back, and you ain't seen nothing yet. The Bills down 35-31. They have the ball, they're driving, and they're on the brink of making history. Just 15 minutes remained in regulation, and after holding a rather one-sided 35-3 advantage, the Oilers cling to a slim four-point lead. Their playoff lives may have evaporated before their very eyes. But Warren Moon would not be denied again this year. Having engineered just one first down following the intermission, Moon set out to add to that 35-point total, which had remained so stagnant on the scoreboard. USC, first down at their 20-yard line. Warren Moon looking over a four-man front. Or actually a three-man front. Dropping back to throw, fires it over the middle, it's good to Givens, and Givens runs out to the 40-yard line and is going to be gang-tackled at the 46. Moon to throw, pressure, he throws, and it's caught on the crossing pattern and stopped short of a first down at the Bills' 47-yard line. Warren Moon under center. Dropping back in the pocket. He has time. Fakes once, now throws, and is caught there. A flag on the play. Hold on. The tackle is made at the 40-yard line. Back to throw. Good protection. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Now looks downfield. And now he's going to take the sack back at the 47 or 8-yard line. A sack by Jeff Wright put the Oilers in a hole once again. And the Bills appeared to be totally free and clear when linebacker Carlton Bailey picked off a moon pass to give the Bills possession with 10 minutes remaining. Bills blitz off the corner, and Moon throws, and it's intercepted by Carlton Bailey at the 30. And he runs back to the right, runs into his own man, and then is down at the 31. Intercepted by Carlton Bailey. Here and the go. Bills take over, intended for Kerner. Curtis Duncan tackled him. Wait, there's a flag on the field, though. Uh, Wilson the passer. Oh, oh, no. oh, my. 15 yards. Oh, no. oh, boy, roughing the passer. In what may have been one of the more critical plays of the final 15 minutes of regulation, Wright once again broke free through the line to sack the Houston quarterback. A short third down completion left the Oilers without a first down and forced Houston head coach Jack Pardee into a decision. Having already converted one fourth down attempt to set up a touchdown, Pardee opted for a field goal try to possibly extend the Houston lead. Montgomery will spot it at the 22, and he drops the ball, and it is picked up 
been thrown to Montgomery, and he fumbles it, and it's picked up by the Bills, and it is Shane Conlon at midfield at the 40, tally. at the 35, or tally, They've at the 20, at the 15, but they're going to bring it back. Yeah. They will bring it back. The field goal attempt had failed, and the Bills had possession of the ball once again. With momentum having swung all the way over to the Bills' side, Reich began his ascent to finish off what would be the greatest comeback in National Football League history. Sprung by the blocks of guards Jim Richter and Glenn Parker, Kenneth Davis broke free for 35 yards to bring the Bills over the midfield stripe and into Houston territory. Consecutive completions to Beebe. They must score a touchdown and then hold the Oilers. Here's Reich. Back to throw. There's the quick pattern. It's good to Beebe. And he's short of a first down. And then Reed gave Buffalo a first down inside the Oilers 20 with just over three minutes to play. He's back to throw. He fires and it's good to Reed. And Reed's inside the 20 and down to the 17 yard line. It'll be first down for the Bills. 348 to play. The clock running. Frank Reich saw what you did, Ben. The first down play was all Reich needed as Reed collected his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. He looks, he throws, touchdown! Andre Reed for the touchdown! The Bills have scored! They have scored to take the lead with 3.08 to play in the game. Andre Reed, three straight touchdowns, and the Bills are in the lead with 3.08 to play. 37 to 35 with the extra point coming up. It is Bedlam. It is pandemonium. It is pandemonium. It is fantastic. Here's the extra point try. Reich will spot it. It is kicked. It is good. Christie kicks it through. 74 yards on the drive. And the Bills have taken a 38-35 lead. With the game now in the hands of Moon and the Oilers' offense, fans strapped in for what would be a fantastic finish. Back to throw Moon. He fires it out short, and Duncan, and Duncan runs out of bounds. Moon under center. Hearts pound at Rick Stadium. Second and five. Moon back to throw. He lets it go short to Givens. He breaks a tackle and then is down at the 41. That's a first down for the Oilers. Tally is blitzing. Here's another short throw, and it is complete to Slaughter, and Slaughter runs out of bounds at the 49-yard line of the Oilers. He's going to throw. Looking around, he throws. It's caught, and Givens will run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Oilers. 2-0-1 to play. 38-35. Warren Moon under center. Remember, he's got Lorenzo White back there with him. A field goal will tie this game. And there was movement there by the Oilers. So here's a little screen pass, and it is caught by White, but that's going to cost Houston five yards. Warren Moon waits. He motions Slaughter to his left. Slaughter comes set. Moon drops back. Throws it over the middle. It's good to Slaughter, and Slaughter is run out of bounds at the Bills' 36-yard line. The Wiley veteran made good on six consecutive passes to lead the Oilers 36 yards as the clock carried inside two minutes remaining. Buffalo's right, who spent much of the afternoon in the Oilers' backfield, caused yet another problem by batting down a third down pass. Houston was forced into yet another late game critical fourth down decision. It is fourth and four at the 34, and now they are pretty much out of field goal range for Del Greco. They're going to have to go for it here, I think, Greg. Well, I think you're right, Ben. They're staying out there with left Warren in the game. Foregoing what would amount to a 51-yard field goal try in swirling winds, Party kept the ball in the hands of Moon. Rolling right, the Houston quarterback picked out Webster Slaughter deep in the Buffalo secondary for first down yardage, and the drive continued. 
probably will try to throw short. Dropping back, looking and looking and still looking, throws, and it's caught down there by Slaughter at the 16-yard line. He had too much time, and he made the play. 18 yards and a first down. 129, 128, the clock running. Three timeouts for the Oilers. Now the Oilers can go for the juggler here. Having thrown the ball away on first down and collecting five yards on a draw play on second down, Moon is pressured out of the pocket on third down. Going under center, he's got two seconds to get the play off, and he just barely makes it, and he looks, and he is thrown. Now he runs the ball and is going to slide down short of a first down at the nine-yard line. We have 34 seconds left. It'll be a fourth down coming up. The Oilers will send in the field goal unit. Faced with a fourth down decision once again, Hardy sends in Al Del Greco to knock the score at 38 and send the game into sudden death overtime. Del Greco is poised to swing the right foot on the ball and tie the game. It's down, it's up, and it is good. And we have 12 seconds to play. It's the Bills 38 and the Oilers 38. Oh, boy start of the fourth quarter and the bills were still pardon the pun on fire were they ever that momentum build up from the third quarter it carried into the fourth quarter here the oilers set up for a chip shot field goal and all of a sudden the rains and the wind <laughs> fly into uh, al del greco's face and greg montgomery who's trying to hold for him can't handle the snap but going back to the start of the quarter andre reed three touchdowns in a row greg here's a guy who's been virtually forgotten in the bills offense in the last half of the season i think that even made it more exciting the fact that andre reed was such a part of this incredible comeback with guys like jim kelly and thurman thomas on the sidelines so now the oilers need three to tie the game they're bringing it down the field carlton bailey intercepts you say whoopee the bills got the ball wrong yeah we see the flag too <laughs> right because bruce smith is called for a roughing quarterback warren moon on Boy, what some people thought was kind of questionable was he ticked off about that even after the game he went in the moon and said i did not rough you but the defense van was so big in the game yes the offense had to come through but the defense came back even from that now warren moon had a shot at it had the ball had to move him downfield get seven or at least three to tie, and I thought he did a terrific job. I know, you know, you and I didn't think the way maybe some fans did, that why didn't the Oilers go for the end zone? They were looking just to drive down the field, and they were very successful. They didn't have a lot of time. Of course, with Warren Moon, he doesn't need much, but they get into field goal range, which is really all they wanted. Well, I don't think they could throw to the end zone, uh, Greg, because the Bills had the safeties playing very deep. And, uh, you know, they just couldn't get the ball down there. So they took the three. You knew that Del Greco was going to make that one. Well, that was a chip shot, and you're right. And you knew it was going into <laughs> overtime. Okay, so it is 38 all, and the Bills are on the brink of making history when we come back. The Oilers erupt and lead 34 to 3. Sales it long, all along, BB at the 10, at the 5, in for the touchdown. Andre Reed has scored, and now the Bills are back in this game. Looking around, throws, and it's deflected and intercepted by Henry Jones at the 40. The Bills have scored. They have scored to take the lead. The kick is on the way. We like shopping here a lot. The service is great. The sales are terrific. It's a beautiful store. I love their meat department. I think Jubilee's customer service is very good. People are helpful, they're friendly. I like that they offer the carry-out service. I do my banking here also. It's very convenient. I don't shop anyplace else but Jubilee. In 1590, Galileo hypothesized that all objects fall at the same rate. But then, he never considered the depreciation rate of luxury automobiles. The Lexus LS400 has retained more of its value than any other car in the luxury class. Cash in at Northtown Lexus today. Are you being harassed by bill collectors? I'm Jeffrey Friedman. 
For more than 11 years, our law firm has helped thousands of families solve their debt problems. We can use the bankruptcy law to stop abusive phone calls, lawsuits, and wage garnishment. We can help you resolve your debt problems, keep property that is exempt, and talk about reestablishing credit. I invite you to call. Your first meeting with us is free. If you're worried about debts, call Jeffrey Friedman Attorneys for a fresh start. They're on your side. Have you ever had your car repaired and just weren't satisfied? Next time, go to the one you can trust, Karuba Collision. The Karuba family has been doing quality collision work for over 30 years. You'll deal directly with the owners who take pride in every repair and will personally guarantee your satisfaction. Paint matching and unibody body repairs are performed by Karuba's expert staff. Free loaner cars are also available for your convenience. Karuba Collision, with two locations, Transit Road and Niagara Falls Boulevard. As a truck company for 90 years, we understand the value of a strong frame, a reassuring strength for towing, whether you're on road or off road. GMC Truck, the strength of experience. It is 38 all, going into overtime. The winner goes on, the loser goes home, and it started with a coin toss. For the third time in their history, the Oilers found themselves in overtime in an AFC wild card contest. Having split the previous two, they wanted nothing more than to win the coin toss and end this episode quickly. Winning the flip and electing to receive, the Oilers began the first drive of the extra session at their own 20. 80 yards from exorcising the demons which had haunted them for the last six years. Reverting back to the offensive game plan which had helped them build that 35-3 lead which seemed to have occurred hours before, Moon came out of the chute quickly. Down play for the Oilers, shy of their 25. Under center, Warren Moon, motion by the man who has pestered the Bills, Givens. Here's a pass coming up, a three-man rush. And the throw out into the flat, and the tackle is going to be made at about the 26-yard line. On the third play of the drive, the Houston quarterback made the mistake that has plagued him so often during his brilliant 10-year career. Looking for Haywood Jeffries to continue upfield for a sure completion and a first down, Moon instead hooked up with Bill's cornerback Nate Odoms to lay the final nail in the coffin. Moon waiting. Takes the snap, drops back, has time, looking around, throws, intercepted by the Bills. It is picked off by Odoms, and he is... Great comeback in playoff Houston. It's out! It's out! Below! Now, they're talking about character. This is one. How you doing, baby? This is a team, it's damn it. One yet. It's a team, baby. It's How you doing? of the ball keep it in the center of the field and here's Davis running right at the 20 and down at about the 18 yard line it'll be second down and eight he took a vicious hit you gotta put the ball away Al Smith the middle linebacker was there to grab him Steve Christie this week. His parents did not make the trip down from Canada. They're not here. 30, 32 yards from the center of the field. Adam Lingner ready to snap it back. It's 38 all. Bills can win it here. Wright puts it down. The kick is on the way and it is good. And the Bills have won it. The Bills have won it. The Bills have won it. They win it 41 to 38. Incredible. What a comeback by the Bills. Like 
like the players, many of the fans in attendance at Rich Stadium on that wild card Sunday could not believe what had just transpired before their eyes. For the Bills, they had just completed the greatest comeback in National Football League history and put on the greatest game ever played. There's not, there's not too many things that I can ever tell you that, that, that you ever experienced that are anything like that. Just, you know, to hear the crowd just going crazy and just really being there when we needed them, not losing hope in us. Um, the guys on the sidelines just, you know, encouraging one another, saying, let's just stick together. Um, that's what makes football such a great game. And, you know, it's, that's what sets it apart from so many other sports, just to, to be a part of something in which takes 47 players to pull something like that off. Um, th there's always something a lot more special about an event when you can share it with a lot of people. And I think that's what was so special about today. No, I just said this is a, a humiliating day. And uh, did, did I think we still had a chance? Well, there was a lot of time left, and there's a glimmer of a hope, but, I mean, it's, a, it's, at, uh, it's about the same chance you have to win the New York lottery. This would have to be uh, the biggest game of my career, and uh, you'd, a kick of dreams of a, an opportunity to, to be able to kick that last field goal to win it for you, and uh, this is uh, my first playoff game, and, uh, I mean, I just can't be more happy than I am now. What was the last Determination that we weren't going to quit and be embarrassed in our own house and uh, you know I think that you always have a chance when you believe in that and, and I think that's that's the, the you know that's the thing that we felt that we weren't going to quit and we weren't going to roll over for anybody if we get beat we're going to get beat trying and uh, turned out when that kick went through the upright Steve Christie who had never been in a playoff situation before the place went crazy what an emotional <laughs> game. What an outcome. Man, I remember looking down at the fans at Rich Stadium, and they had, many of them had joined hands. It's one of those events, sometimes it's tragedy, but sometimes it happens in sports, where this kind of thing brings strangers together, and it did. Hey, I'll tell you, I thought about the two and 14 years and how far this franchise has come and what great thrills the Bills have provided for the fans of Western New York. But never in my wildest imaginings could I have conceived something like this. A script in Hollywood could not have come up with this one. It was the greatest comeback in 72 years, and we'll never see another one, Greg. And years from now, Van, you will never forget where you were, whether you were in that stadium, whether you were listening on the radio, or if you happened to find a TV that had the game on. Years from now, you will never forget where you were or the 400,000 people who <laughs> will say that they were there. But you know, I think when it all boils down, Greg, I think there's one word that sums up the Bills play on this particular day, and that's heart. They had a heart the size of Rich Stadium. They couldn't have done it without it. Uh, you can't come back from a 35 to three deficit with one or two big plays on either side of the line of scrimmage. It takes a multitude of great plays and great heart and character, and the Bills certainly have that. Heart, character, and a belief in themselves, and they believed that they could march to this comeback. 41-38, to 38. what a game. As I said before, they made history. And thank you for sharing with us the greatest game ever played. So long. When the odds are against you and everything's awful and nothing is going your way, and everyone's saying it's out of the question, for clearly it isn't your day. Just remember what happened at Buffalo when the Oilers came into town. They were making a route of it. The Bills were just out of it. By 32 points, they were down. When a lot of your friends have just written you off, abandoning you to your fate, and they say there's no point in trying to win, that for you it's simply too late. Just remember how Buffalo pulled it together when their team was so far behind. It took such heart and soul to climb out of that hole that I tell you it boggles the mind. How both offense and defense refused to accept that the game and the season were over. Though everyone said they were buried and dead, the Bills simply wouldn't roll over. When everyone tells you you might as well quit, when you simply don't have what you need, think of somebody like backup quarterback Wright and a pass catcher named Andre Reed. Lesson so one in that, wild, in that card. wild card playoff they played is it's always important to try. 
No matter how hopeless your own situation, you never, no never say die. Lesson two is the lesson the Oilers learned. On a day they were doing so well. People said, you just know it. There's no way to blow it. The truth is, there's no way to tell. When the brakes, the brakes are all yours and you're riding so high that victory's coming real soon, remember what happened to Houston, to the Oilers and Warren Moon. Whether they're booing or cheering you now, and whether you're cold or you're hot, you've got to keep trying and doing your best and giving it all that you've got. For the contest's not over until it's all over, and in life it is also the same. Until it's all over, in mud or in clover, you've got to keep playing your game. Courtesy of NFL Films, HBO's Inside the NFL, Adelphia Cable, and TCI. To achieve your